Okay, awesome. So, um, so a couple of things. So, we could probably spend easily an hour just talking about Velociraptor. I, I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Uh, I'll just show you the things that are kind of most relevant, I guess. So, this is the Velociraptor UI. So, this was the UI that I used to administer Velociraptor all week. Um, it is a single binary. Like, this is one of the coolest parts about Velociraptor is that it is extremely simple to deploy because it's it's a single binary, both for the server and the clients. They are the same executable. They just have a different configuration file. So you want to talk about like, you know, ease of deploying. All you have to do is get one binary into the environment and you're done. Uh, so on my WinHunt1 workstation, I'm running the server binary. Well, it's the same binary, but I'm running the binary as a server. And then I pushed that binary out to all the clients as clients and so they're all connecting back to me and so you can see i've got somewhere just a little over 40 systems connected to me right now um, if i were to start drafting some queries up here i could show you those systems like here are all the ent boxes um, you can see I got green lights, meaning they're all connected to me. Notice I can also apply labels to them. So as we started to as we started to confirm uh, compromise, I would tag systems that we know for sure have been compromised. Because then, as I started to schedule hunts against the systems, I could just simply say I want to run a hunt and I want to run it on all systems tagged as compromised, right? Instead of hitting them all, I could just hit the compromised ones. Uh, same thing with servers or domain controllers or what have you. So labels are kind of flexible. You could do whatever you want with them uh, to be more targeted in your hunts. Um, so so, uh, so talking about the, oh, actually one more cool thing I want to show you. Once you have Velociraptor installed on a system, this might be the coolest part. So if I click on, say, ENT DC1, for instance, right? This is the domain controller in the enterprise network. One of the coolest things in the world is I can open up the file system on that machine right here in the browser. So NTFS, um, C drive, you know what I mean? Like, you name it. I can just pull it right off the box. So if it's malware, if it's event logs, if it's whatever it is, I can just simply um, browse to it right here. And this is all being facilitated through the Velociraptor agent. Um, so nothing to stop me from grabbing, you know, desktop.ini, collect it from the client, and then download it. Boom. I've got it. You know what I mean? So uh, from a from a hunt and like retrieval of suspected malware or scripts or anything that you need in the environment, it is a couple clicks away. Um, same thing with the registry and things like that. All right, so um, the hunts are where Velociraptor really makes its money. So in the hunts, this is basically saying, okay, I want to do a thing, and I want to do it across all my all my systems or a subset of my systems. And so as um, as TJ had mentioned earlier, one of the early things he'd asked me to do was, hey, I need to know who are the domain admins in this environment. Well, you can do that with a simple PowerShell command if you were on the domain controller. Well, we weren't on the domain controller, but Velociraptor was. So I could run PowerShell against the domain controller through Velociraptor. And the way that would have looked is, so I just say new hunt and searching through the artifacts, there's such an artifact called Windows System PowerShell, which simply says, the thing I wanna do is run PowerShell, okay? So scroll down. And it's going to ask me basically what PowerShell command do you want to run? Well, I want to run this one because this is going to spit out domain admins. Click next, give it a description, get domain admins, and then next tell it where do I want to run this? So it only made sense to run this on domain controllers because they are the ones that can spit this information out. So I had a label in there for domain controllers so I could be precise in targeting this hunt. Click next. It just gives me a preview to confirm this is the thing you're about to do. Yes, create hunt, done. Uh, and so now once I start that hunt, which I'll just go ahead and do for, for grins, I'll start that hunt. Um, it'll come back and say it's scheduled on one, two, or three, however many domain controllers there were. And look at that, it was finished the second it started. So I could just come back to results here and I could get all the responses that came back, download that as a CSV, give that off to my team, and now they know here are all your domain controllers. So that's a really, really simple use case of Velociraptor is straight up run PowerShell for me, right? Like run this PowerShell command and give me the results. 
So, um, so another hunt that I could run, um, if anyone's familiar with CAPE, it's just one of many different triage acquisition tools to allow you to kind of fetch all the, the most critical forensics artifacts off of a system. And so, um, so I basically ran that across all systems just to kind of get a baseline of things. Um, and that brought back a whole ton of data that kind of required some manual parsing and stuff, but that's a cool capability. Once, um, once we identified malware on a system, um, I wanted to get hashes of the malware. So I just simply ran a PowerShell command that would go and you know, hash the, uh, the malware that we already knew about so I could hand that off to my Threat Intel team. So I got an MD5 hash here for the confirmed malware, give that off to the uh, Intel folks, let them go and look up you know, other IOCs and things like that. Um, you know, here's where you see us pushing Sysmon out to all the machines. So that was pretty useful. Again, notice how we're using that 10, 10, 10. Um, that was super uh, helpful to us. Um, but let me get into where we really started to, to, to ruin the, the red team's day. So based on all the great information that we were able to pull from like uh, TJ's uh, dashboards, um, based on all the indicators and stuff we already knew about, um, we built basically the eradication script of all scripts. Uh, we did it last night because we had all of their, their indicators, right? So um, for instance, we found a malicious service on one system called Volume Shadow Copy Service. We found uh, several process names, Google Update Broker, Java Update Scheduler, and we found several pieces of malware on disk. And so basically we created this eradication script that would basically step through all of these things we knew about. And it would, it would it's in a very specific order because, for instance, if there's a service running on the box, you can't just kill that process because the service will just restart it. So you have to you have to first stop the service, then you can kill processes, right? So it's it's kind of in order of how it needs to be done. So disable services, kill the processes, delete the files. Um, so once we had this script writ written, we leveraged Velociraptor to to simultaneously download and execute this script on every system in the environment. And I'll tell you, I'll kind of show you what that looked like. Um, so to, if I go back to today, so I called it, my hunt was eradication of all the things. And if you see the command down here, I'm not sure how, how easy that is to read. It's a single line command because I'm basically using an old attacker favorite, which is a PowerShell download cradle. Um, and that download cradle, is both downloading and executing that eradication script in one command. And if you go and look at the results, I'll just show you the results here. It's a little bit easier to read. Um, the results are basically um, confirmation uh, comes back, you know, beginning eradication, uh, found the file, deleted it, found the file, deleted it, right? And then you, there's a lot of systems that didn't have those IOCs on them, and that's fine because it, it didn't hurt anything. But on any system where it did find the IOCs, it would kill the processes and delete the files. And so once, once we did that, we were halfway there. Okay, like we knew, okay, we have, we have just killed almost every foothold that the adversary has in the environment, as well as removed their persistence mechanisms to prevent them from returning. But we weren't done because the only processes that we could safely just terminate are processes that could never be benign, right? We knew that these processes here were 100% malicious in any instance. There were no legitimate versions of these processes. So we could kill them without prejudice. We could just nuke them no matter what. If we found them anywhere, just nuke them. However, th those weren't the only processes that attackers were occupying. They were also injected into several legitimate processes, such as SVC host or run DLL. And you've got to be more careful with those. You can't just indiscriminately kill every run DLL 32 in the environment or every SVC host in the environment, or you would destabilize the entire network. I mean, the, you'd be crashing systems left and right. So we took a more surgical approach with uh, surgical approach with those. Um, we used a uh, a well-known um, script written by Jared Atkinson called Get Injected Threads. It's a PowerShell script, and um, same same concept. I basically uploaded that script into PCTE and then used the download cradle, um, just like you see here. 
So I, I ran the download cradle to pull down the get injected thread. Uh, then I ran the function of get injected thread. The results that came back, matter of fact, I can literally just show this to you. Uh, so it's not like uh, PFM, right? Um, what this looks like. So right now I'm on ENT DC1 and I'm gonna run exactly that command. I'll run that download cradle uh, to pull down the get, inject, get injected thread. So the only thing that should be outputted here are processes on this system that, ha that have had code injected into them. Now we learned very quickly that there were two false positives, Ruby and Ruby W. We know they're false positives because if you notice in the command line arguments, it's launched by Puppet, which we know is part of the range administration tools. So we ignored those. However, on several systems, we would also see a return for SVC host, run DLL, I explored at EXE, like so other processes that we knew, okay, red team is in that process. Um, so once we identified the processes that had been hooked and injected by the red team, all we needed to know was the thread ID that they were currently running in. Because I can't kill the whole process. I can't terminate process ID 1428, but I can terminate thread ID 1600, which is effectively just killing the thread that the attacker is running on, not, not killing the entire process itself. So once we would identify that thread ID, I had another similar PowerShell command that would go through and run a different uh, PowerShell script called stop thread, and it would stop it by thread ID. So thread ID 1984, for instance. So we rinsed and repeated that process multiple times because we would we would wipe them all out, and then they'd come back with a couple more, and then we'd wipe those out, and then they'd come back with one or two more, and then we'd wipe those out, and they were done. So um, kind of a combination of the eradication script and then um, getting injected threads and terminating injected threads uh, was how we we kicked them out and uh, they were not able to finish their their op for shenanigans today but but something we did have to look out for and make sure that we deconflict it was when we saw powershell execution yes. um that we that we we focused on what we knew we did and it obviously this pointed back to velociraptor.exe, but you know we just had to be wary of that when we're starting to filter out our dashboards. Oh, I understand. You're filtering out your the noise that you're generating on the box. So it's just hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. But um, but I'll tell you, this is the easiest situation you might find yourself in if your folks are needing to uh to kind of deconflict what uh what a hunter is doing on the box, um. You're going to have a hard time if you're just using conventional, like living on the land binaries, because guess what? So is the attacker. So like if, if I was just PowerShell remoting all over the environment, running PowerShell, um, my team would have had a really difficult time deconflicting what was me and what was the attacker, um, short of just maybe seeing, you know, what username was in use. But that even that's not always going to be reliable. Um, so um, let me see something real quick and event.code one. If I can get some good hits here, there we go. So if you notice, you got a ton of PowerShell activity here, right? Um, tons and in, 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 to the naked eye, this would all look super evil to a threat hunter because it's base 64 encoded and yada, 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 yada. But if you notice, all of this is coming from a parent image of Velociraptor. So to quickly eliminate all that noise, it'd be a single filter. It would just say, don't show me things where the parent image is Velociraptor. And then, you know, you lose a lot of that noise really quickly versus if we were just using, you know, LOL bins and just hopping around with P PS exec or, or PowerShell remoting, it gets a lot harder to deconflict at that point. Yeah, I highly recommend checking out Velociraptor. Um, Mike Cohen, who's the developer of Velociraptor, he comes from the Google team uh, that, that also built GUR. Um, he runs a Discord channel where he solely uh, sits and answers people's questions all day and night. And I know this because I'm one of those people that asks some questions. Um, it's a really awesome project. Uh, it's so new that our red team had no idea what it was and got really nervous about letting us use it, which was probably appropriate for them. 
um, I, I recommend recommend checking it out.